Hey, how you guys doing? Um, for this week's video, we're going to take a look at a really neat application. This comes from Topaz Labs, and they actually also make some uh, quite a few other um, applications toward video and photography. And this particular one, Video Enhance AI, is primarily for upscaling video. For instance, uh, standard definition to high definition and um, perhaps 1080p um, video to 4K or even 8K might be possible. Now, it doesn't just do that. Of course, uh, a lot of times, anytime you upscale the video, you're also, uh, I'm not saying necessarily uh, degrading the quality, but it kind of zooms in on the uh, video, kind of uh, making it more fuzzy and inherent problems. And usually you get, um, it kind of softens the video. Now what the uh, Video Enhanced AI does, it will go in there and it will fix the detail on the problems with upscaling such videos. And it also take videos that may not be shot correctly in the first place and it fixes those problems as well. For instance, video noise you kind of get when you shoot in a low light situation and also compression problems for a highly compressed video. Um, you tend to get those blockiness in certain situations and will uh, help improve that video as well. And uh, this one comes in at about uh, $300, so you have to decide for yourself if it's worth it or not. But it does, uh, it's great if you do a, a lot of upraising of video, you can go in there and uh, do batch processing. So it might be worth it for you if you uh, work a lot, uh, on a lot of video that you do upscaling with. So we're going to take a look at that uh, right now. Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, here, uh, we're on my uh, Mac Pro desktop. This is a Mac Pro 2013 model with the uh, dual 700 uh, graphic cards. We're also going to be uh, testing out the performance uh, of this application as well, how well it works with um, the computer. Um, as well, the uh, video we're using right here is from my Canon C100, which actually takes a 4K sensor and it um, down samples it to 1080p which is kind of weird because I'm going to be up sampling this to 4k and uh, so we're going to uh, take a look at the interface and uh, some of the settings and the very first thing I've noticed uh, uh, utilizing this application of course with the uh, Topaz Labs uh, video enhanced AI is the interface is really well thought out and it's so intuitive um, you can almost use it right out of the box and they have tool tips all along the way. Now initially when I opened it up, it did have a tutorial, which I kind of uh, uh, did a little bit about, but I decided to just jump in there and I was really surprised on uh, such a great interface. Um, so down here is where you add all your videos. Um, you can do batch recording, um, so you can actually set up all your videos beforehand and then obviously um, batch render them. So once you put your video in there, it does give you some information, um, the resolution and frame rate, obviously. Now here on the right, um, you can do this several ways. Um, the AI model for um, upraising your video. You can actually do it one of two ways. Now you get a drop down list right here, which is nice because you can just hoover over it and it will give it an explanation for each um, quality setting and you can actually use this depending on the type of video you're going to be using. Um, also notice um, some of this has changed. Um, I've noticed this is actually a updated um, version of the application. Uh, before they didn't support interlaced video which now they do which is all these uh, five selections right here in the center or right here. And so you over, uh, you can hoover, ho, hoover, hover. <laughs> I can't say that word, over each one, and it'll tell you, give an explanation what it is. Also, which is nice is you can go through the um, uh, AI model picker, which brings up a um, uh, drop-down box, and it'll actually give you a little bit easier explanation of all your settings as well. And uh, this is kind of like a quick way of doing it. The um, you can input the quality of the video, uh, video scan type, either interlaced or progressive. Now, I do have an interlaced camera, but I recorded this um, to the desktop, so it is now progressive. And like I said, it does now support interlaced video. 
Um, is this input computer generated such as um, motion graphics or something like that or visual effects? You can put yes or no. And here um, you can go into um, what the main part of your video is about. If you just to enhance the upscaled um, detail, um, fine tune enhancements, you can it'll actually give you more uh, ways to enhance the video um, and so forth. We just went ahead with the default enhanced video detail, and then it gives you a little explanation of what each setting does: the Artemis. Um, uh, Gaia model computer graphics and then Gaia high quality. Now we went ahead and just chose the uh, Gaia high quality which is just upscale the video and enhance the detail because anytime you upscale a video it will um, kind of I'm not saying degrade the quality but it will make it a little bit more fuzzy so what it does is enhance the detail that you lose from upscaling the video which is nice as well so um, for this one, we did just choose, um, I'm trying to think where is that right here, just to show you uh, Gaia high quality all right here. Now the sizing, we decided we're going to uh, take a 1080p video. We're going to upscale it to uh, 4K uh, UHD right here. You can go as high as 8K. Now I think it all depends because you don't necessarily want to if you have a uh, um, 1080p, I wouldn't necessarily scale it up to 8K. You're going to probably um, degrade the quality quite a bit. I mean, you, it can be done and it will enhance the video. But if you're going to go 8K, I'd probably just use a 4K video to do that with. Of course, it all depends. Now, it could be possible like um, to um, simply input the same resolution you may not even want to upscale it you can use the same let's for instance I'm using a 1080p and I can actually render out in 1080p without scaling it up but I can fix some of the inherent video problems um, which I've mentioned before earlier which is um, compression artifacts and video noise let's say I recorded the video in low light situations so I can fix those problems um, but it's primarily for upscaling uh, video, um, which is nice right here. It actually gives you green settings. For instance, it will, um, I'm not saying exactly a film look, but it makes it more natural. Um, I wish they would add a on off switch for this, which they don't seem to do. Unless maybe perhaps if you set everything to zero, I'm not sure yet. Okay, you can output this video in different ways. Um, I did uh, record this in a little bit higher quality. Um, I think it was MOV. Um, so you have two choices. Uh, MP4 uh, recorded in the H.264 codec or MOV, which is interesting. It does MOV, but it actually uses uh, ProRes high quality, which I believe is 422, which is actually pretty good for uh, applications such as this. So you can get very high quality output if you want. And then, of course, the um, kind of like motion graphics with uh, JPEG, PNG, and TIFF as well. But um, we're just going to stick with uh, MP4 output since we already recorded an MOV. And then you can choose the compression factor. Um, now, you can also go into the preview. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how you can... Um, do this in different ways. Like I said, you can't do uh, batch processing, but simply adding each video and then selecting all your settings on the right. What you can do is take the same video and you can try out the different AI models if you're choosing um, between them. And you could simply just uh, import it, for instance. Um, we're going to choose that. And so what we can do is to actually choose a different a uh, AI model, and it's taken a minute to come up here. And then let's say we can choose a different one. We're going to do um, maybe, um, we'll say Gaia uh, computer graphics. So you can actually compare the two and decide which one you want to use. You can use it that way as well. We're going to go ahead and um, just uh, remove this because that's not what we're going to do on this one. Now the preview, you can actually 
see the changes that it does. Now this may take a while. I may have to pause it because it takes a couple minutes to show you a preview uh, once it upscales it. So um, in fact, we're going to pause it right now and then unpause it when it's finished. And just to show you, it's actually loading AI model and this will take, uh, just to show you what the screen looks like, we're going to go repause it. Okay, uh, we just resumed it, um, just to show you. Um, the video on the left is the original uh, 1080p video. The one on the right is the um, upscale to 4K. And we're going to try to zoom it in a little bit more so you can see the detail. We're going to go up to 100%. And uh, just to sh uh, compare the two, and as you can see, uh, the one on the left zoomed up to 200%. You are seeing um, kind of the fuzziness of the video and here's the uh, 4k version uh, zoomed in and as you can see it smoothed everything out or excuse me it gave uh, sharper detail that you're going to lose with uh, upscaling a video and you can still kind of see little rims of the glasses where some of the banding is still there but it still enhances the video quite a bit and let me see um, oh look on the, uh, the bottom left here it does show you each video separately the details uh, of course the 1080p at uh, 23 point well actually 24 frames per second here on the right is showing the 4k version uh, UHD um, scaled up to 200% and also uh, same frame rate of 24 um, frames per second so we're gonna go ahead and also notice right here this is telling you how long it would take for each frame to render out uh, for that particular quality, which is a Gaia high quality model, uh, V5, would take uh, 11.4 seconds per frame. Um, so it will take a while to render this video out. I, I can't remember how long the video is. I think it's about a couple minutes long, anywhere from two to four minutes. And we're gonna go ahead and stop that. Uh, we're gonna stop the preview. And uh, well, let's see, I'm going to try to stop that. And we're kind of, there we go. <laughs> Hopefully it wouldn't uh, mess anything up. So we're going to go ahead and uh, render this out in 4K. We're going to see how long it takes. And we're also going to see the performance for this uh, type of computer, which is, of course, is the uh, Mac Pro 2013 model with dual graphic cards. It doesn't seem to utilize... Um, dual, cra uh, dual graphics in, in this particular mode so it looks like it only renders uses one graphic card um, so maybe in the future they're going to support dual graphic cards um, of course it depends on the type of computer and, and several other things but it seems to work quite well so we're going to render it out and see the performance and then we'll come back uh, just in a minute um, I decided not to render out the video for uh, a couple of problems and uh, first thing I wanted to show you is a screenshot of iStat menus, uh, just showing that it only utilizes one graphic card. Um, now, I do realize before I rendered out, it would take about 11.5 seconds per frame of video. So what I did was, uh, before I rendered it out, um, I made the video about four minutes, or not four minutes, four seconds, and it, even when I um, inputted it into the application, it said it would take 17 minutes to render out. So you have to decide for yourself um, if it's worth it. Now, I don't forth, uh, fault the application at all because um, enhancing the video using um, um, using its, its special AI function does take a lot of rendering time and in, in, in performance away from your computer. So um, this is actually a five-year-old computer. Perhaps if you had uh, multiple graphic cards that are supported, I don't know if it's supported in this version. And um, so take that in account if you're thinking of purchasing this product or even if you have a dedicated computer for rendering out, that might be, uh, may not be a problem for you. So uh, take, take that in account for the application. I think the application is wonderful. Um, and so you have to decide for yourself if the uh, $300 cost of the program is worth it, uh, worth it and rendering out it's going to take a lot of time depending on the speed of your computer. So uh, that kind of conc concludes the um, 
kind of a demo and re review of the application. Um, so thanks for watching and see you guys later.